Okay, so you've been asked to make one of the items you've collected reappear somewhere in the level. We call this respawning. And you may have heard that phrase in the context of video games you've played yourself. Now, oddly, this code needs to be added to the object that doesn't disappear during a collision, as it's part of the collision detection algorithm. This isn't that bizarre though. If the treasure disappeared, then how would it execute the code to make it respawn? So into our pirate code we go. Let's think this through. We want our pirate to collide with the treasure. The chest should pop and disappear. The score should increment by one and then we want to tell the treasure to reappear. This is one of the largest single statements we've ever used in Java. It's got a great name though, add object. However, there are a number of different bits we need to include in the function to get it working. Let's start with the leftmost part. This would be the variable name we've given to the world already in the collision detection code. What was that then? Well, we assigned the variable on this line, and it's another one of those situations where we've got a confusing naming scheme. The variable here is island, lowercase i, so that's what we need to pop in there. Now, this form of code, using the variable name and a dot, means that we're using a method in that variable. So we're basically telling the island itself to add an object back in. The first argument we need to think about is the variable name of the object we want to add. And that object is going to be the treasure. Going back into our code, you'll find that we've defined it as treasure, capital T, so not exactly a huge mental exercise here just yet. Let's get that into the code. Great. Last but not least, we need the X and the Y axis locations where we want the treasure to respawn. Now, this should be random, shouldn't it? It's not much of a game if the thing we're trying to collect keeps appearing in the same spot. Let's go back to the code we used to build this world. We said that it should be an 8x8 grid, meaning that it'll be 8 cells wide and 8 cells tall. But what does that look like behind the scenes? We've seen this before, and one thing you may not have noticed is that it is zero indexed. In other words, the first location is zero, so when we have eight cells, it starts at zero and ends at seven. This is useful to know because we need to select a location at random in this world, and we've already used a function to generate a random number all the way back when we programmed the enemy characters to move at random. It was the getRandomNumber function and is part of the Greenfoot library. All we need to provide to that as an argument is the amount of values that I want to choose between. And in our case, that's eight, as we have a width of eight. Let's get that in the code. Great. Now, we're just going to place this chunk as the x-axis location. That means in my diagram, I need to make a bit of space, but there we go. Just pop that in there. Now, this looks really complicated at a glance, but we've built it up of really small building blocks. Rather than trying to remember the entire thing in one go, it's always worthwhile trying to remember the building blocks. Anyway, what about the y-axis location then? Well, it's going to work in the same way. We've got a height of eight cells, so we need to use that get random number function again to find us a random position out of that eight. Now, when we include this code in the y-axis location argument, our overall expression is going to be enormous. Wow, look at that bad boy. That's the sort of code you can show to your nan to impress her with your computer science skills. Right, let's get that entire thing typed into our collision detection code then. Try not to give yourself RSI while you type it all out. Great, that's done. Let's compile to check it. All good. Now let's play our game. I can move my pirate captain to the treasure and yes, pop, score increases and then... Woohoo! A randomly respawning treasure chest. Let's get chasing that and get our score up. Again though, it still isn't much of a game. We haven't given the poor second player character any code to allow it to interact with the treasure. Meaning that you can chase it as much as you want, but player two's not collecting anything just yet. Let's rectify that situation in our next video. <laughs>